Welcome to Tea Time, our new column where we invite interesting people from all around the world, now living in the Czech Republic. We chat with them about their experiences and we have some tea. Today I'm joined by Hannah Kohankova. Hello, Hannah. She's Hello. the director of Prague Pride's Festival, which is incredible. Thank you so much for joining me today, Hannah. Hi. Hi. So, to start off, let's talk a bit about the Prague Pride Festival. Tell us a bit about its history. How did it come about? When was the first event held? And stuff like that. Okay, so it all started actually 11 years ago <laughs> when I met with some of my friends and people that I knew uh, and we just, it was just really by coincidence. We started talking about, okay, so uh, there is a pride in Brno, there is a pride in uh, Tabor, which are smaller uh, towns in the, in the Czech Republic. So uh, how come that there is no pride in Prague? <laughs> and we were just really kind of like telling, okay, so we, we really want to have uh, pride in, in the city. And we just decided that it's really no time to, to wait <laughs> anymore. So we really just like got together. We, we emailed uh, some other friends that we knew, like activists. And, and uh, one evening we get like th 30 people in one of the gay bars. And we just decided talking about what, what, what can we do to, to make the Pride in Prague. Uh, at that time we didn't know that it's going to be called uh, Prague Pride. And we had just so many different expectations. And from that, really like the first uh, small team started. And this year we are celebrating the 10th edition. <laughs> that is incredible. You know, today Prague, Prague Pride Festival specifically, is probably one of the biggest and most significant LGBTQ plus events in Eastern Europe. Why do you think Prague specifically became such an important location for the promotion of LGBTQ rights? I think it's it's really thanks to uh, our geography, maybe because we are really like in, in the middle between the east and in between the west, and and we try to take like the the best from both sides, uh, and and I think also because Czech Republic in general is really not so religious, so there isn't really like a question of church and religion that that's very often uh, like some of the specific churches are against the uh, LGBT people. And um, yeah, and I think it's also thanks to the uh, thanks to the people who every now and then really try to be uh, initiative to be really active uh, that come together. But I think it's really like the yeah, uh, yeah, our history and and yeah, and the, and the way Czech people are. <laughs> yeah, so you would think that they're less conservative, maybe more progressive. Yeah, in some senses, uh, yeah, like we are not like so activistic, for example, as in Poland, because in, and uh, because in Poland, you really have to like in a way like f uh, fight the uh, yeah, f fight, fight the Catholic Church in a way and also also much more like nationalism that is there in Czech Republic. It's more like we don't care. <laughs> Which is also like it's not very positive, right? <laughs> like like we just like to live our like normal lives. Uh, yeah, so so sometimes it's just like really e e easier. Yeah, I see. And then what is the main goal of Prague Pride Festival? Yeah, so uh, Prague Pride Festival is organized by an organization called Prague Pride. <laughs> and, and our main goal is really to make the lives of LGBTQ plus people better. Uh, and we really want to be recognized as people, not only as gays or lesbians who are you know, like demanding more and more rights. We just want to be, you know, we just want to like live our lives as uh, straight people are. And uh, we also really would like to have the same opportunities as, as straight people are, which is really not the case. Like in the Czech Republic, for example, we, can, we have registered partnership from 2006, but it's lacking so many, uh, so many rights. For example, in my case, uh, with my partner, we have two kids, uh, uh, one daughter who is uh, four and a half and the son is uh, one and a half. And I'm not the birth mother of neither of them. And according to the Czech law, I'm like a no one. <laughs> Even though that we like we have been with my partner for like 11 or 12 years now, we have been like really planning for the kids. I, I have been there like at their birth, <laughs> and we both like really share the parenthood because we both work part time and we like equally like really look uh, after our kids. 
And so that's like really frustrating. Or for example, uh, lives of uh, people who are going through transition. Uh, in Czech Republic, you have to, uh, you have to be sterilized to, to really make the transition also into your documents, which is like so, so discriminatory because like, why? Why, why to really make such, uh, such big op operations? Yeah. I see. Wow, that is incredible. I didn't know about the sterilization. Is there anything else? Any other procedures you have to go through here uh, too? Yeah, I don't. I I I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, like, but you really have to like. For example, no, not that I don't know, but it's more like that you really have to go like from like male through all this uh, all the uh, yeah all, all the operations to to become female. So there is no way that you can really choose where to be like in the spectrum. Yeah. I see. Wow, that's incredible. But you know, in 2020, you would think that there are so many more people who are accepting LGBTQ+. It's, it's a norm. It's not, it shouldn't be something that's looked at, you know, weirdly or differently. So why do you think it's still important today to hold the Prague Pride Festival? Yeah, I mean, it's very important because it's like really visible event, uh, which is very important for all of us. It's a uh, very positive event. <laughs> I'm always like so energized during the, the whole week, even though it's really a lot of work. And, and especially for people who are going through coming out, even if it's, uh, if it's like very young people or even like older people, it's really for many of them, like the first opportunity to, to meet similar people as they are. And we know it from the surveys that we have, like uh, every after festival, we really try to ask people like why they came uh, to, to Prague Pride, what, what did they gain from it? And we got like so much positive uh, uh, feedback that they come for the festival because it's for many of them like the first queer event that uh, they ever go to. Sometimes they go with their friends, uh, uh, sometimes they go with their family and they very often really return. And so it's very important. And especially like this year because of the uh, pandemic of coronavirus, uh, that was uh, like these like people and they're coming out and uh, it was really the, the primary motivation for us to, to have the Pride because so many Prides around the world are being canceled or being, are being postponed till 2021. But we with our team really decided that we have to try to make the event <laughs> happen and I'm just like overwhelmed, like uh, like one week before the festival started, we counted that we have like more than 120 events in a week, which is just incredible. We have, we have like every day, like five five days of uh, streaming of uh, uh, streaming of our debates and workshops and, and discussions, and all this is there available for everyone, especially also for the people who just don't want to travel to Prague, which is very like good decision uh, in these days, yeah. So they can still like be part of the of the festival. That's that's amazing. I'm happy that it's still happening, and you know you have a lot of online and live streaming events as well. But let's get a bit more personal. You already got a bit personal, which is uh, really great. But what does Prague Pride Festival mean to you specifically? Um, what it means for me, uh, like why mm, is it important to you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I was there like really from the beginning, like the 11 years ago. Uh, I was like doing the, uh, I was the director of programming for the th for three years and then I was just burned out. <laughs> so I had to focus on my normal work because at that time it was all volunteering. Uh, now it's, uh, it's, it's my part-time job and the, the primary reason why I decided to join back the, the festival were really uh, my family, uh, where, where our kids, uh, my partner, that I just couldn't, uh, that I just couldn't just like, uh, be passive. <laughs> I just said that I really want to. Uh, I just want to be part of the movement in a way because I really, uh, I, I feel that, uh, and I really see the uh, Prague Pride Festival and all the activities that we do as the organization as really important part of the movement. And uh, for me, what is very important is the cooperation, networking, not only between all the queer organizations in the Czech Republic but also abroad. Mm -hmm. And I just really. Love sharing. <laughs> I see. Now let's get a bit more controversial. Last year in Boston, uh, I don't know if you heard of it, probably you did, there was a straight pride which was held. How do you feel about that? Uh, is it going on this year as well? <laughs> I actually don't know. I mean, it yeah. might. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think like 
if somebody wants to have like event, let them organize it and then see uh, if it's really needed. If it's needed, then it means that it will continue. But like in general, I think it's a it's a nonsense because we, we like we live in a straight world, right? So like the straight pride is like our everyday life. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> <It's for> just <laughs> straight pride essentially is you know for people who feel like they need more representation. Would yeah. you agree with that? They need more representation. I don't know. Like, look, look at the, for example, look at the news in the Czech Republic. Like, how, how many female representatives are there? How many politicians you see, uh, like female politicians you see every day in the news? Like, two percent maybe. How many like women are there? Like, uh, you know, like, like telling the news. It's it's really not many. So, I think straight men are just okay. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And uh, talking about another part um, of the world, a different country. Um, last year in Poland, also in the city of Bialystok, many people went out to, you know, the, the participate mm -hmm. in the Prague Pride Festival. Sorry, not Prague Pride. It was a Polish Pride Festival. Yeah. Many were verbally or physically abused, faced a lot of negative backlash. Is there anything we can learn from that here in Prague and make sure that all participants are safe? Yeah. Uh, actually, last year at the Prague uh, Prague Pride Festival, we invited. Uh, the activists from uh, Bielostok to come to Prague and they did and it was like it was just really just a few weeks uh, after the event and it was like very emotional because we really wanted to have them with us and uh, us with them uh, and also we like invited them for the parade so they could really march with us in the front uh, feeling, feeling safe and uh, luckily like in, in Prague we have very good cooperation with all the like police forces uh, for, for them. Uh, it's a uh, Prague Pride is an event that they enjoy and they support. So uh, people can really feel very secure. And that's also the reason why many people from uh, our neighboring countries uh, to the east, east part really come, uh, come to Prague, come, come to the Pride Week because they really feel secure and they feel as themselves. And, and of course, like for us, as I said, like the cooperation with also neighboring uh, countries and uh, our uh, friends that are from uh, Polish prides, uh, pride in, in Hungary or prides in Slovakia, they're just part of our like rainbow family and we cooperate a lot. Even like today <laughs> in the morning, we had just incredible like uh, networking call, we call it, with, with about like 15 uh, different prides from Central and Eastern Europe, and we were just like sharing what's going on in our countries, what's going on with uh, with our prides, and what what's going on in our lives. Be because especially people who are in the countries where it's not like safe to be openly gay, lesbian, bi, or, or trans, uh, it's just so terrible, and it's 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 so dangerous. And uh, and I I was almost almost like crying just like hearing what they really experience. And they do the same stuff as I do, but they're like in, under so much like pressure and danger. Good thing you touched on this topic. In countries where, as you rightly say, people are oppressed and you know LGBTQ representatives are judged or put in jails or even killed in some countries, do you think Pride Festival could help them? Definitely. Uh, like Pride Festival, like in many countries, is really uh, like a festival of cooperation. Uh, and if it's, for example, like LGBT community is not so like white, you can always like reach out for like allies from different organizations, from uh, different companies, uh, or like find people who are like very open and can be role models as well. Uh, and it, it definitely, it definitely helps uh, to feel kind of normal <laughs> to, to say, you know, like. I mean, everybody wants to go to Pride every now and then, and it's nice if it's in your country, especially it's nice if it's in your, for example, town or city. So I really, for example, admire Pride organizations in Poland because last year there were about 27 Prides, even like in very small villages and towns, which are in the no LGBT zone, so-called, which is just crazy idea of having like municipalities where no LGBT people are allowed to live. And it's just, it's, it's really t total nonsense. Yeah. yeah, and you mentioned a very important word, feeling normal, right? Do you feel like LGBTQ plus representatives can feel normal in Prague or in the Czech Republic in general? Yeah, I think pr Prague is our main city, so it's most uh, kind of, yeah, 
it's 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 most mixed, <laughs> even though it's not mixed at all <laughs> compared to uh, to like the main cities uh, in Western countries. And you can like you can very easily fit in. You can very easily like find jobs in uh, companies uh, where they, for example, have some uh, like internal policies regarding LGBT plus people, meaning that you can you know have the same benefits as as, as straight people. Uh, it's like much more accepted. Like people yeah, who are different are much more accepted here. But uh, it doesn't mean that like everybody is very safe here. It it really depends on the circumstances. I was asking uh, one of my friend who is from this organization called Queer Geography, uh, who are really like mapping and doing all the surveys, and he told me that it's not just the question about whether you live in the main city or in a small uh, village. It's a matter like what what's your uh, environment. How your family feels about you being uh, gay, lesbian, bi, trans, uh, and uh, how is the situation at work? How is the situation in school? So it's really the people around you who very much uh, also uh, affect uh, whether you can feel okay, safe, or whether you feel just strange and you don't come out. Yeah, yeah. and you know th there are so many people who are afraid of being looked at differently, being judged just because they are who they are. They are afraid to come out, to speak out. Give one advice to them. Well, <laughs> uh, just don't be afraid. Sometimes it's, it's, I mean, you would be like so amazed how many like new friends <laughs> you will make just by being out uh, and just by being yourself. Because I think like if you are really are not able to like realize your full potential, your full like real like being like full personality. Uh, I mean, people cannot be happy like that. And 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 it's, it's yeah yeah. And I wish everybody that they could like really come out whenever they want. <laughs> yeah, I think Pride Festival is an incredible statement that we are all the same. It doesn't matter what gender we are. It doesn't matter what sex we are. It doesn't matter what religion we are. It doesn't matter who we love. And uh, that's, I think, an incredible reminder for everybody that you know we're all equal and we should all have equal opportunities. Yeah. So thank you so much, Hannah, for joining me today. It was my pleasure. It was very inspiring. And at the end of our program, we take a little picture with our guest. So please okay. move closer to me. So thank you for inviting me. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much. Yeah. Cheers.